Hi everybody and welcome back to the Schumacher MI9 build and we're on to everyone's favourite now, the shocks and uh, what a great shock this is um, again Andy and the rest of the team at Schumacher have done a fantastic job on this shock It's uh, there's no shock uh, on the market that's shorter than this shock um, the quality is fantastic this is without a doubt the best shock that I've ever built in touring car racing there is absolutely nothing wrong with it and this is completely stock standard out of the kit so there's no need for any option parts you just build it as the instructions um, and in my opinion you've got the best shock on the market today okay so uh, let's pop this together I'm just going to do one because nobody wants to see me build four shocks I mean there's TikTok videos you could be watching of people dancing around living rooms um, so we'll get this one put together um, we're going to start off by putting the piston on the shaft and we've got a, a gold nitride coated shaft as standard um, and we're going to put a bit of thread lock on this screw uh, this is just the core rc thread lock um, if you don't use the core rc stuff make sure that you don't use um, anything that's like the red uh, thread lock or green because you do want to possibly be able to get it off again one day um, so just make sure it's the blue stuff and then we're going to just pop that on there and then just screw that together and uh, comes in the kit you've got the Schumacher spanner you can use just to nip that up you don't want to go crazy because you don't want to damage the piston spread it at all with the screw the screw is really nice it's much better than circlips because you're not going to get any wobble it, it sits nice and square it can't twist or turn around it's uh, it's definitely the best solution for that um, but like I say you do want to be able to possibly get it off if you want to try different pistons 1.2 pistons etc um, so yeah just use some blue thread lock um, and then that's that so we're going to pop the uh, o-ring into the shock body um, so a bit like the diff I've just pre-wet this um, o-ring just soaked it in the uh, oil that I'm going to use uh, just for you know five minutes or so just so that everything's lubricated when it all goes together we're not going to um, snag the o-ring with the the threads at all so what we're going to do is just pop off first of all we're going to put these uh, shims in now in the uh, instruction book it recommends two shims and i completely agree i would start off with two of the small shims now these shims slightly squash the o-ring uh, just put a little bit of extra pressure um, just so that you know things don't leak and the o-ring seals properly what's nice about the washers is o-rings swell there's there's no o-rings which don't swell because obviously they soak up the silicon oil so over a period of time they will swell i don't think there's any o-rings currently on the market which don't swell uh, at all so it's better to have them that you've got a couple of washers in there then further down the line if you notice on a rebuild that it's a bit draggy you could take a shim out or maybe take the two shims out and see how things go but with everything fresh start off with um, just two shims and just the uh, standard o-ring so we're going to pop that in put, pop the little top hat on little guide and obviously the bottom screw now what i'll do is i'll do that up tight but then i'll crack it off slightly and this is because when i put the shaft in again i don't want to scratch the o-ring so I don't want the o-ring to be too squashed. I want that to be able to guide through and then I'll tight it up, tighten it up again afterwards. Um, so while we're here, we'll pop on the um, spring collar. So we've just got this o-ring just to pop in and uh, then they're not too difficult to do. You just sort of like roll it around the inside like that and it will sort of find its way in like that. Um, there's no real need to put any grease or anything on the threads with these because they're a really nice fit. The o-rings, um, not you know it's basically tight enough to grip it but it's not too tight that it's going to drag all the way up so you can just screw that straight on and it doesn't really matter where we put it at the moment because we'll measure that later when we uh, set the ride out etc just pop that on okay so now we're going to uh, pop the shaft through now what i'll do is i'm building this one with uh, core rc uh, 375 that's what i'm going to start off with so i'm going to just put a little bit on the Red like that this again just so I don't damage the o-ring I'm going to pop that through pull it through and then I'm just going to while it's all in place I'll tighten that bottom bit up and then that's 
nice free shock, uh, just about the right amount of drag, and I know I haven't damaged the O-ring at all. So that's ready to go and have the oil put in later. So we've got to put the uh, shock bottom on now. So the first thing we need to do is uh, pop the ball in. Now you want to look at the direction of the ball. Like I was saying earlier with the uh, wishbone balls, all molds have got a direction that the ball goes into. That's when the tool's made, it's designed that that's the way the ball will go in so you don't damage the cup. And you can usually tell because there's a, there's a little ring like a plastic ring around the outside edge and that's the side that it goes in it's even easier on this one because you've got the little lug for the spring retainer so you just know it goes in on that side so same as the uh, wishbone balls we're just going to pop that on and then click it into place with some long nose pliers and again that's going to be lovely and free as i say as i've said so many times the tolerances and the quality of this car is second to none Okay, so we're going to screw that onto the shock body now, um, or the shock shaft even. Um, so what I will do, because I hate getting these on crooked, um, I'm a bit funny for things being, making sure they're straight and so on. So I'm going to take a normal 3mm uh, screw, and I'm going to put it into here first, just to take a few seconds, because it's easier when you've got a, a driver to be able to do it up with. Take a few seconds just to get make sure that's straight, and it is, and I'll just go in about you know, two or three millimetres just to sort of cut a thread. There we go. And now that's going to be a lot easier to put on. So now screwing this straight onto here, um, there's a couple of ways to do it, obviously, uh, depending on what equipment you've got yourself. You can grip it sort of just above the threads with, a, say, some side cutters so you don't damage the shaft. The best way, of course, is to use some um, proper... Uh, sort of shock pliers to grip the uh, grip the shaft with and on these ones what I've actually done because we want to set this gap um, to eight millimeters so between the bottom of the shock and the bottom of the or the top of the ball we're going to set an eight meter gap eight millimeter gap um, so I'm going to use these and I've I've modified these basically so it's an eight mil gap um, but obviously you can just fine tune it later with a vernier gauge so I'm going to pull that through and then it's just a question of screwing that on and we've got the thread there now so it's going to be nice and easy to get that straight and we're going to go on until that bottoms up and then i know now that that is eight millimeters but obviously we could use a vernier gauge to check that um, if you were using a different um, you know, device to screw it together um, and that's it so that's basically your shock together so we're going to um, obviously fill this up with oil now and uh, get ready to uh, bleed it off and seal it up and get everything ready to race. So we're going to start off, as I say, with the 375. So what I would do to start with is I'll tip this, a bit like pouring a drink, tip the body to a side, to the side, and then put the oil in this way, straightening it up just as we get to the top. If you were, uh, as I say, uh, pouring a fizzy drink. And then that's going to have got the least amount of air in there to start with. There's still going to be quite a lot of air in there, but it's going to be less than if we just chunked it in. Um, and then I'm going to move it up and down nice and slowly a few times and see all the air come to the come to the top. And just do that sort of like five or six times until you can get to the point where you can sort of like keep it low. The piston is low in the body and I can go up and down quite rapidly without it all squidging. So I'm helping get the air out there. Now, obviously, you've got a couple of options here. You can just let that sit. I mean, you, you do need to let that sit for a little while, um, you know, half an hour, an hour, maybe. Um, and maybe in between that time, maybe sort of go up and down a couple of times again while it's sitting there. Or obviously, you can use um, a shock pump. So I'm going to pop this one in the shock pump just to speed things up. That goes into there. And obviously that on top and I'm just going to move this out of the way so I don't bang my camera just pull that up and then obviously in there you won't really better see it but in there you'll see all the bubbles obviously race into the surface now I find you need to do this uh, two or three times so let the bubbles all disappear you know leave that sit for a minute or so 
and then you can let the air out gently um, and yeah let the air out gently because otherwise it will spit everywhere so you just sort of like lift it and let it out like that so i would have left that a bit longer left that for a, a few minutes and then do the same process again just move it up and down again a few times pop it back in and then repressurize it um, do that two or three times you can with all four shocks on there obviously that's only going to take you know three or four minutes with the pump leaving it sort of like 30 seconds a minute each time um, and then we're ready to build it so uh, i'm going to get that prepared and then we'll come back and uh, bleed it all off and get it ready to race <laughs> 